Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Hey everyone, today I am going to take a look at this Digitrax SDX H166D DCC decoder. It's a sound decoder, and here are some of the features it has. First off, it's a light to medium application decoder. It has a one amp continuous uh, draw load, and it peaks out at two. So most of your locomotives should run on this for what it's worth if you're in N or HO scale. Next, it has six 12 volt functions, which are good for a total of 200 milliamps. Again, this should be plenty of, this should be plenty enough for your normal locomotives, including, uh, you know, headlight, backup light, even interiors lights. It, it should be plenty enough if you're using LEDs. Maybe not motors, but it's certainly for LEDs, it'll be enough. It has a multitude of built-in sounds. I'll go into over those, but also it's programmable. Apparently, if you have a programmer and some other software, you're able to actually change these sounds at will. What's important to me is because I'm going to use this in a B unit um, is that it is fully speed matchable and I use um, three speed matching. So it has uh, CVs two, three, four, five, and most importantly, six. Six allows me to set the midpoint, which is really important if you're using three-point speed matching. Um, so I always look for uh, DCC decoders with CV6. It appears though, if you want to have, uh, and you want to use speed table operation, it does have that option available as well. What's interesting is this actually comes with a, uh, a speaker pre-wired into it, and the speaker actually has a baffle or a box around it. Um, that you know, th that could add a good 10, I guess, dollars to it in terms of your value. And I'll certainly try the built-in speaker, but I'll show it to you a little bit later. It's not a speaker that I particularly care for or prefer, but we'll see, we'll see how it works. And interestingly, it does have a small capacitor built into it, and it's pre-wired as well. And it should give you a little bit of current keep, but I don't think it'll do a whole lot. I'll see if I can test it for you to see how much uh, energy it retains and puts back into the system if the power goes out. I, it's, it's so small, it's hard for me to believe that it'll do anything more really than maybe help keep the lights on and the sound on for a couple of milliseconds, I'm not sure. On a side note, it looks like this has about a one year warranty. So if anything goes wrong with it, um, I think you can send it back and they'll send you another one. Just keep your receipt for it. All right, changing the prime mover sound is uh, that goes along with CV60. So CV60 is the one you need, and there are eight built in to choose from. So if you use uh, set CV60 to zero, what you'll get is the GP38 uh, by EMD. The uh, next one will get you General Electric Evolution or the GEVO series. And by the way, I'll go through all of these one by one so you can hear them. And the next one, you'll have uh, EMD SD70. And then if you set um, CV60 to 3, you will get a GP10. Next in line, you'll have two Alcos, an RS1, and a Century 420. And then after that, you'll have two steam engine sounds to choose from. I'm not sure what the difference is between each. On top of all these prime mover sounds, you'll be able to change the horn and the bell. So, um, and again, you'll, you're able to load your own schemes by purchasing some sort of programmer from Digitrax and loading software onto your computer. Okay, here's the decoder itself. We'll get it out of this package, or at least I'll try to get it out of the, where's the, where's the, uh, where is it? I'm gonna tear it, nope. No, at least no, it's in there pretty securely. Get it out of here for you. And you will see that it actually has two sets of wires, um, one coming out each side, and it also has the speaker and the capacitor. So it's a nice little package, but it has this, uh, I, I don't like these ovaloid speakers. I've never had particularly good luck with them, so I'm not sure what to tell you. Some people like them, some people don't. I, I don't, I don't think they project very well. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, but I just don't think that this oval speaker moves enough air around, even with a relatively large baffle. Just, I just don't find that it moves in a volume of air. But we'll give it a try. We'll, you never know. I mean, maybe this one's better than the average one. And the fact that it comes with a nice um, baffle slash speaker box is really nice. All right, so there's the capacitor. Again, I don't think it'll provide a whole lot of protection, but maybe over bad points or a rough area track it will. Okay, here's the locomotive I'm going to put it in, and I always, what this is going to be a B unit made by Kato slash, it's made for Stewart. 
And the reason why is if it doesn't sound very good or something like that, I'm gonna use this in a multiple diesel unit consist, so it will be kind of drowned out by the other ones. Like usual, I've gotta make sure this actually works first, so we'll go ahead and stick it on the track and make sure that it runs so that I know that if I hook up the decoder, there's actually something to hook it to and I won't burn it out because it's got a stuck motor or something like that. Okay, and as you saw, it runs pretty well. In fact, it runs very smoothly. And as you heard, it's starting to rain cats and dogs. It's almost like I live in Hadley's Hope right now or something like that. So let me pry this apart for you. Get the, just pry on the two. I'm sorry, I've got really bad nails right now. Pry this apart, come on, get out of there. All right, and it's a really basic unit. It has this, um, just this flat wire plate across the top and it's pretty simple. It's a B unit, so there are no lights. So this will be very, very, very easy to convert. I'll simply just um, put the red side down on the engineer's or right side, and then I'll put the black side down onto the wires on the left side. And let's see if the speaker, will that fit in here? Looks like it's gonna fit in here just. So I think I'm in good shape there. Yeah, I, I think this will fit in there. It's a little bit high. Yeah, I, I think it'll work. I think there's enough room in here, so I, I feel pretty good about that. So we'll go with that and see how this works. Let's actually make sure that I can get the decoder in here without any interference. And it looks like if I lay it in here just like that, I'll have room for the speaker in the back and I'll be able to put this little capacitor up front just like that. And everything should fit in there nice and neat. And I won't have to do anything strange. Yeah, no, I, I think this will work just perfectly, so. There's a really basic idea how I'm gonna do this. And yeah, again, I'm gonna put the red wire down on the right side, black one on the left, and then I'm going to peel up these two little contacts and that is what I'm going to solder the um, orange and gray leads to. So let's cut these off. I won't need these at all coming out of this side. Just won't need them. Put those somewhere else. And this side I will cut to about the correct length so I don't have like a lot of wire buildup. So yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, yeah, all right, there we go. So pop those off of there, that'll be close enough. I don't have to be exact, exact on this, just so as long as I can get all the wires down. And you know, if I decide to pull this out of here, I'll have enough wire to work with. So this is about where it'll sit. I will put that in with some thin double-sided tape and I will go in the other room and solder this, so hang on. Okay, so here's what I have in the end. If you look, I've basically just got four wires because that's all I need because there are no lights. All right, let me just zoom in on this so you can see what happened. Okay, you'll see that I've soldered this red from the decoder to the right wire. I've soldered the black to the left, and I've soldered the orange and gray to these little pads that are coming off of the motor that used to be tucked under the wires, but now they're not. The one thing I don't want happening is I don't want these little, um, these little pads that came off the motor, these little leaves or whatever, to short on the chassis before they were held down by the wire, and that's how they stayed in place. But since I untucked them from the wire, they're free-floating now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck little tiny pieces of wood um, in between the frame and those little leaves that are coming off of the motor. You can see it here. They'll fit in quite nicely. And this way I know they're not going to short against the frame. There we go. Just tuck that in. We'll just kind of push it in. It's uh, with just the another piece of wood. I not even glue these down because I know they'll kind of just snug in between the motor and this little lead coming off of the motor and I won't even need to do anything to them. Oops, <laughs> didn't work very well. Let's go ahead and just ram these in there until they're kind of bottomed out, which they are. Now I know those aren't going to short, so I think we should have a working product here. Just need to use some dry tack to tuck these wires away, that's all. I'll keep them on there just in case I decide I don't want to use this decoder in this application. And I guess while we're in here, yeah, I think while we're in here, I'll just go ahead and quickly lubricate these, um, this tower worm gear. We'll just put some Teflon lubricant on there since I'm in here already. 
no problem. I just don't need a whole lot. Just want to make sure that some actually gets in there. This is a new um, chassis from what I can tell. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and try this with the defaults and 60 should be CV zero. Okay, the problem here is that my DC transformer is really, really low voltage. It's really low power. Um, it's designed for toy trains. Um, and I, since I don't run DC normally, I just don't keep a nice one around. So let me go switch this to digital. While I'm at it, I actually, I guess, better find out what the exact motor correct one should be. So the GP38, which is CV0, uses a 645, so that's what I don't want. So I, I guess I should use a GP10. Will that have the right? Yeah, that has the right prime mover. So I'll make a mental note of that when we get around to the correct CV. The horns sounds good, I guess. Let's try the bell. There's the coupler clank, but boy, the the actual prime mover is really quiet. It's really quiet. All right, so it looks like the prime mover chuff volume is on CV140, so let's go ahead and raise that all the way to the top. There we go. And the actual main volume is on cv58 but it's kind of bizarre it says that the maximum volume is zero zero so yeah i don't i don't get it, it seems like zero is actually the minimum which is what i think it would be not the maximum so let me go ahead and raise it to the maximum value which is 15 see how that works Okay, it's definitely louder, but I can tell it actually from the, the sound meter, but well, I think the speaker is really terrible. I think it's really, really awful. Again, that was with the EMD 645 motor. Let's go ahead and change this so that it's going to work with the GP10, which is the correct motor for this. Let's see how that works. No, that, that just sounds like television static to me. That sounds pretty terrible. So let's try to add some speed. That sounds absolutely wretched, just really horrible. But let me see if actually putting this inside of the shell will amplify it. Sometimes that does help. I've, I've had a couple models where actually the shell acts as a voice box and it starts to sound better thanks to that. So let's see if that works. No, that's just, that's all kinds of terrible. I really don't know what I can do with that. It sounds really bad. So the only way to do anything about this now is to go ahead and switch out the speaker. Let's see how that works.
right, it's definitely louder now, but the um, the and the bell and the horn sound okay to me, but the prime mover sound is still just totally garbage. I mean, it's it's just garbage. I don't even know what else to say about it. And neither of the EMDs sounded all that good. That was, uh, so I don't know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through each one of these. And I'm doing a review of this anyway. So you can hear each one of these sounds. And then I'll pick one from it. It's not going to sound exactly like the correct motor for this. But that's just what I'm going to have to live with if I'm going to want to use this decoder.
So I went back and forth on this in a bunch of times. It um, just wasn't sure. Frankly, all the EMD sounds, they all they all sound pretty wretched to me, to be honest with you. So I, I don't have to be exact. I can find one that I think I like, and it took me a little while longer to do that, though. Okay, I think I settled on this one. CV value of five. Of course, it doesn't really sound like the proper EMD engine at all, but it'll be drowned out by the other two and then eventually three locomotives in this multiple power consist. And you probably... All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, I'm going to program this so that it has a DCC address of 6515. That's because the lead engine is 6513. There's already one at 6514, so this will be next in line. And these are the CV values I need to make that happen. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you notice, for CV29, I'm setting it to 34. That's because I don't want any kind of DC. I don't want this to respond to DC at all. And I also want to turn off the speed table since I'm going to have to speed match this. So I noticed this earlier. I noticed it likes to respond on a crawl to two as the input um, into the throttle. So that's fine. I'll just bump up CV uh, two so that it'll respond to one along with the others I have. So that should work fine. Also, it sounds like there's some friction in there. I think, again, this is unused and it's brand new. So um, I'll go in there and just lubricate one more time to make sure I've got all the friction points out of this. All right, while I'm speed matching this, I'll go ahead and give you my conclusions on this decoder. Is it worth it? I think so under some really strict circumstances. The speed controls seem to be pretty good, and the fact that it has CV6 makes a huge difference to me. That means I can speed match it pretty well with anything else that I have. The sounds are incredibly iffy. Now, the steam sounds didn't sound too bad for me, but I'm not really a big steam person, and you can adjust your chuff rate, so that's a bonus. You can also use a sensor to time your chuffs. The included speaker isn't very good, but if you're gonna put it in a sounding box, like a box car or something like that, it's probably good enough. I noticed that I may have overreacted a little bit about the ultimate volume, um, but either way, putting in a better speaker certainly helped. In my particular application, I think it's okay, actually. It's in the middle, and I'll, I'll play it for you middle, in a minute, but it's in the middle of a bunch of other locomotives and a steam car that are making sounds. And I actually ended up switching back to the GP10 sound, believe it or not.
Maybe a good place to use this is if you're going to do it in a cheap conversion, particularly with a standalone locomotive or maybe one that runs in consist that you're just not worried about too much. You know, maybe you're going to compete like if you're going to convert something older and it doesn't need to sound all that great because everyone like they know it's old or something, then maybe that's a good time to use this. I don't exactly have a beer or champagne. I certainly don't have a champagne taste in my mouth, but I don't exactly have a beer one either. But I don't know if I'll be purchasing any more of these, to be quite honest with you. What I'll do with it is pass over the camera with it, and you can listen to it if you can even tell the difference while it's in consist. And then I'll go ahead and run this consist for you. Hey, I'm glad you joined me. If this helped in any way, please let me know. This is an expensive hobby, and this may help reduce your costs. And if it does, you know, I'm glad. This is something you can use. I don't think anyone will gripe about you having this on their layout. And like always, you know, happy model railroading. Take care and stay safe. Talk to you soon.